Today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to take super, super cinematic photos right on your iPhone. I'm using the Sandmark 1.55 times anamorphic lens made for iPhone. Thank you to Sandmark for sending me this lens. They haven't paid me to say anything, so there we go. I'm warning you, by the end of this video, you're probably gonna to wanna to buy it. Oh, now I gotta turn around and grab my camera. Oh yeah, and uh, I'm gonna put that helmet on. All right. What is an anamorphic lens? Take a look at the lens. You can see that there's a convex shape. It's curved, so it's squeezing more horizontal imagery or information into the iPhone sensor. Let me show you. First, I'm gonna take a shot of this cool Pontiac without the anamorphic lens on, just using the telephoto lens on my iPhone. So here's what that looks like. It's a little tight. I'm not gonna move my phone. I'm gonna screw in the anamorphic lens and take the same shot again. Ready? Now you can see that a lot more horizontal information is being captured onto the iPhone sensor, right? But right now, of course, the image looks really squished because that's the way the lens works. Later on in Photoshop, what we do is a process called de-squeezing. That's just essentially stretching out the picture horizontally so that everything looks back to normal. And then I like to crop the image a little bit more to a 2.76 to one ratio. It's very cinematic theatrical ratio. What they also do is they give you amazing lens flares. Take a look at this. Watch what happens when I point this up to the sun. So that generally just makes them look a lot more cinematic. Look at that wall. I don't wanna just take a random picture of the wall like this. It's, it's, it's like amateur photography. Let's bring the camera close to the ground. Get down, take a picture here from the side, use this yellow line as a leading line to the back wall. That's what separates the amateurs from the pros, baby. <laughs> gotta find cool angles to use. Very small, very light. It also comes with a phone case that gives you two slots to screw in the lens over the telephoto lens or the normal lens. You can't screw it over the wide lens because the wide lens is just too wide. Sandmark also sent me this Pro case, which gives you more phone coverage, more protection. That's pretty much it. It's a little bit more grippy. The little slots to screw in the lens make it very easy to line it up perfectly with the lens. It also comes with this clip, and let's say I don't have a case, or I forget my case, or I just absolutely hate cases. <laughs> you can just clip it onto your phone, and you clip the lens right like so, line it up with the lens. Once the lens is screwed into the case, all you have to do is rotate the lens. You just have to line up this line here so that it's lined up on the top. Mm, it smells like corn tortillas. What can I do to this bus? So cinematic. If you edit it with a little bit of color correction or add like a very deep LUT, things look good. So we got someone running, so this will be a great way to set up a shot. So I'm gonna wait in the grass a little bit. Two shots. Love it. I work hard for my ends. At times I gotta repent. Just got paid now with spent. Just got laid now she vent. If you know anything about anamorphic lenses, they are primarily made for video, for videography, for filmmaking. They're taking a picture of his cool car. Gotta make sure we fed, or else she gon' be fed. We do take out instead. I'm a photographer primarily. I do consider myself more a photographer than a videographer. So I was like, I wonder if this lens can be useful as a photographic tool. And it can be. It's like taking one shot, one great frame out of a scene. I tend to keep it low key. I got a shorty, she's sweet. She falls through the crib with the tree. And she got me open, she wet like the ocean. Yo guys, I'm racing to this spot that has like an infinite sunset. If the sun actually sets nicely today, it's pretty cloudy, so I'm not really expecting to get much. I hope that I get a nice sunset just so I can like kind of impress you guys tonight with the lens, but we'll see what happens. We'll continue there. I'm all charged up and ready to go. Whoa. Ooh. Shit. Well, that's all part of the video, I guess. Honestly, it looks okay. Oh, screen's fine. Lens looks like it got a little scratched, but it doesn't look that bad. It's a really solid lens. I mean, it is premium quality. Look at that. It's like metal on the outside. The case got a little dinged here, but I guess that protected my phone from breaking. Okay, 
Let's take a picture of this. So now when I'm taking pictures, I'm really trying to compose the shots. Like I'm taking one frame out of a film scene or like the best single frame from a film scene. What would a cinematographer do? We might get something guys. Look over there, look at those clouds in the distance. What I'm using to shoot my photos is this app called First to Light. It's made by the developers who make Filmic Pro, a video app designed to give you a lot of control over your shots. So First Light is great because it can preview the anamorphic de-squeeze for you. When I press this button here, I can de-squeeze the image and preview what it's gonna look like, so. Boom. I don't use the native Apple app. I prefer to use this one because I get to shoot in RAW and do all the editing later on. The lens isn't incredibly, incredibly sharp around the edges. It is sharper in the middle of the lens, of course, so when you're shooting video and it crops into the sensor, it's not really an issue. When you're shooting photography, you get the entire sensor, meaning you also get pretty much the entire lens coverage. And yeah, the outsides of the lens aren't the sharpest thing ever. So I will say that this lens is unapologetically vintage and old school looking. So you have to sort of embrace that look when you're editing your photos. I like to do that. This will be nice for a couple shots, I think. There is a lot of chromatic aberration, but think about like, I don't know if you've watched this new show, uh, <laughs> The Falcon and Winter Soldier on Disney Plus. I noticed that they were using lenses that had a lot of chromatic aberration and they sort of just embraced the look. It's kind of a style. Now, the last thing, let me show you this. There's an incredible amount of lens distortion. Look at this in the top and bottom of the lens, but that's because the lens is squeezing a lot of horizontal information. So it really helps if you put a grid on so you can see your horizon lines and what you're doing. Let's line this up here and get closer to the water. Line it up and then we can get a really beautiful shot, making sure the lines are very straight. And then later on in Lightroom, you're gonna definitely be adding some lens corrections to adjust for that distortion. Here is the craziest thing about this lens. It's the fact that you are getting an anamorphic lens with autofocus. I don't actually even know if any other anamorphic lenses that go on like mirrorless cinema cameras have autofocus built in. They probably don't because they're cinema lenses. Now, the lens itself doesn't have any moving parts or moving glass inside, but the iPhone has autofocus. So you're effectively getting a very affordable anamorphic lens that has autofocus. All right, let's keep going. Can't go up here with the one wheel. I'm just finding that this lens has sort of sparked this new motivation to go out, shoot photos, because it's fun to use. The police boat. I'm not particularly any kind of iPhone photographer or smartphone photographer. Typically I just use my iPhone for like snapshots of my everyday life, things like that, or things I want to remember, or photography locations that I want to remember. This is pretty cool. Let's go in the front like this. Nice, I like that. So yeah, I'm not particularly fond of iPhone photography, but the thing is like when I put this lens on my phone, I wanna take it with me. It's small, it's stealthy. I always have my iPhone on me, right? You always, you always have your phone on you. This is a super light lens to carry around and throw on if you wanna take some stylistic shots of anything, really. These are pretty cool. I wonder if we can take some nice shots. We're getting a bit of color coming through here. I don't know if that's gonna be a cool shot. Probably won't, but it is what it is. And guys, the flares are just so cool. That is like a huge reason you're gonna to wanna to get this lens. They're just so fun to work with, so sick. Oh, this is a cool shot. Cool. Oh my God, how am I gonna get through these guys? Canadian geese, don't attack me, please. Cross with your babies. You're witnessing this firsthand if I'm attacked. Trust me, I won't hurt your kids. <laughs> I just wanna get through, guys. Oh, this is beautiful. What the? 
All right, so should you buy this lens, let me give you a couple of scenarios. Honestly, I am not saying this because San Mark gave me the lens for free. I honestly really do enjoy using the lens as a photography lens. It's opened up a world of new composition, learning to frame things in a very cinematic way. It's, it's honestly, it's, it's been something different and that's what's really sparked my motivation to get out and shoot a lot more. So I've been one wheeling around like crazy with this in my hands and just shooting away. Not every photo turns out, but I'm learning to frame things on the fly really quickly. And it's seriously a lot of fun to do. Is it focused on me? We don't know. Now it's focused. This whole time was not in focus. I am so sorry, guys. Here's a couple scenarios. If you shoot with your iPhone, for sure, get it. It's a lot of fun, it changes things up a little bit and you get kind of a new way of shooting. If you don't typically shoot on your iPhone, I would still say, if you're interested, why not? It's not that expensive and it's fun. It gives you a good reason to go out, have more fun shooting photography. If you're using it for video and you're an iPhone videographer, it's honestly a no-brainer. You have to get it. So yeah, generally this lens has given me a new perspective to shoot from, a new view on photography and composition and uh, lens flares, of course. The lens flares, you can't forget about those. And um, it forces you to get more creative with composition and, and it's really important not to overlook how important it is to compose things properly, especially when you don't have a crazy shallow depth of field. When a lot of stuff is in focus, your composition is really, really important. Okay, it's getting dark and this is probably the most uncomfortable I've ever been vlogging. There's tons of people walking around. I never really like to vlog when people are walking around, but, but uh, I just figured I'd try and practice and, and get used to doing it. I'm really sorry that we didn't get an incredible sunset to look at, but I guess you'll have to wait for the next video. Peace, guys.